In this question, we have been given an image and we have been asked to identify correctly whether this image is depicting mammalons on young succedaneous teeth, mammalons on young deciduous teeth, abnormally erupting permanent lower incisors or all of the above. Now, on the first glance, you might think that the correct answer is option number three, that is abnormally erupting permanent lower incisors, because what you see here is that the permanent incisors are actually erupting lingual to the deciduous incisors. Okay, so these are the primary incisors and these are the permanent incisors. So, because they are uh, they are erupting lingually, you might think this is abnormal, but this is actually a very common eruption pattern that is seen with the mandibular anteriors because the tooth germ of the mandibular incisors is actually placed lingual to that of the deciduous incisors. So as these incisors erupt, they actually move in a labial and upward direction. Okay, so that is their direc direction of eruption. So eventually these teeth are going to, uh, you know, exfoliate and fall off. And this will get corrected because the low, uh, the... Uh, permanent incisors because of tongue pressure are going to be pushed labially and they will come into the correct position in the arch. So what we see here, okay, although it appears as a situation of crowding, this is actually a temporary phase which is going to be self-corrected. Okay, so this is a type of a self-correcting malocclusion and this is not abnormal. This is something that we see commonly with the mandibular anteriors, okay. Now, what else we can notice is that the incisal edge of the deciduous incisors is flat, whereas the permanent incisors have these uh, notches which are present over the incisal edge. Okay. Now, these grooves are actually called mammalons. So, we are seeing that the mammalons are present not over the deciduous incisors. Okay. They are present on the permanent incisors. So, the succedaneous teeth are actually the permanent incisors which are the successors of the deciduous incisors. That's why they are known as succedaneous teeth. Okay, so these projections that we see, they are actually known as mammalons. Okay, they are known as mammalons. So, what are mammalons and why are they only seen with the permanent uh, incisors and not with the primary incisors? It's because the enamel formation that takes place in the permanent teeth takes place in the form of lobes. Okay, so it takes place in the form of lobes. When these lobes fuse together, the lines of fusion that are seen, Okay, when they fuse together, the lines of fusion that is seen is represented by these mammalons. Okay, now eventually what is going to happen is because of wear and tear uh, during uh, once it has erupted into occlusion, because of wear they eventually flatten out. Okay, but as newly erupted teeth, you will always see these mammalons that are present over the maxillary as well as the mandibular incisors. Okay, this basically tells us that enamel formation has taken place from various lobes. Okay, now uh, these lobes that are uh, present uh, or these lobes that help in the formation of teeth, okay, there is a minimum of four lobes, okay, so this is again an exam question that was asked, that is what is the minimum number of lobes uh, that is uh, present in a permanent tooth, okay, so the minimum number of lobes that will be seen will be four. There may be teeth such as the molars, okay, which we may have five or more lobes uh, from which the enamel formation has taken place, okay, but the minimum number is four, okay, so this again could be a question. So, in the anterior teeth such as the incisors, etc., there are four lobes, okay, there is a mesial, there is a distal, okay, there is a labial and then there is a lingual lobe here, okay, so this is the lingual lobe, this is the labial lobe. Okay, for the premolars again we will see four lobes. Okay, but the naming for this instead of labial it will be buccal. So there will be a mesial, a distal, a buccal, and a lingual lobe. Okay, supposing there is a, a, a second a pre mandibular premolar. Okay, so there sometimes there is a mandibular premolar that has two lingual cusps. So when there are two lingual cusps, they will be named as uh, mesiolingual and distolingual. Okay. In the molars, the molars are, can arise either from four lobes or more than four lobes, that is five lobes, okay. And the name of this lobe will represent the cusp, okay. So, for example, if it is a mesiobuccal lobe, okay, this is the mesial aspect, this will be the mesiobuccal lobe, okay. So, it is going to be named after the cusp, uh, the name of the cusp itself. So, this again can be asked in the examination, that is how many lobes uh, does a tooth uh, develop from or how many lobes are seen in the molar tooth or what are the names of the lobes, etc. Okay? So, this again is an important question.